What's up kings, what's up queens? Today's video is on the topic of metabolic autophagy and intermittent fasting, how fasting can promote autophagy. Autophagy is basically a metabolic process by which cells disassemble and get rid of their unused dysfunctional components. You're basically recycling cellular debris. You're taking out the trash. And this happens about 16 hours into a, 14 to 16 hours into a fast is when autophagy begins and it peaks at around 48 hours. After that, it sort of uh, diminishes a little bit. But it's an incredibly healthy process for charging up your system, and it actually won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for physiology and medicine. So it's an incredibly important topic to study, I feel, because uh, so much of what we can accomplish is related to our physiology and our ability to you know, perform. So I'm quickly gonna cover a few components of why intermittent fasting and metabolic autophagy, why these things are so beneficial. And the book that I'm gonna read from is by a fellow YouTuber, Simland. I recently discovered some of his works and he seems very well versed on biochemistry and bringing that to light in regards to you know human performance. So I'll link his YouTube channel um, in the end card of this video and also leave a link to his book, which I found to be a valuable read, albeit a little dense. When your body faces a shortage of energy, whether through caloric restriction, fasting, starvation, or anything the like, then you're going to promote the fusion of mitochondria. This lowers your energetic demands because the organelles in your cells are better connected. It'll also make you recycle old worn out cell components and convert them back into energy through the process of autophagy. The key to keeping mitochondria healthy is to maintain energy homeostasis and remove the dysfunctional cellular components that are causing inflammation. Time-controlled fasting prevents mitochondrial aging and deterioration. It can also promote the longevity of mitochondria by eliminating the production of reactive oxygen species and free radicals by dysfunctional organelles. Mitochondrial biogenesis is the process of building new mitochondria through the activities of certain metabolic regulators. The key to increased mitochondrial biogenesis and longevity is to prime the body towards a fat-burning metabolism. This increases your cell's ability to produce energy from its own internal resources, autophagy, and lowers insulin, less oxidative stress. Starting intermittent fasting for the first time was kind of a scary process for me because I was in really a time of my life where I was really trying to get big, trying to get muscular, and I was working out all the time. It was just like a phase that I went through. Um, it's definitely less important for me now to like have size. But I found that as I was fasting and as I sort of do, started doing like a 16-8 regimen of intermittent fasting, my clarity and focus went up a lot. A lot of my viewers have talked about how they suffer from brain fog. So much of what affects our focus and our ability to concentrate on our activities is related to the health of our gut and the health of our bodies in general. And fasting, I found, at least having a degree of fasting in your life, has been really beneficial with regards to my ability to concentrate, which is not a benefit I expected. And alongside it, it didn't reduce any of my size at all. I had as much power in the gym as I, as I ever had. Fasting boosts brain power by increasing brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, which helps to grow new brain cells and synapses. It also promotes serotonin, which regulates synaptic plasticity with BDNF. Fasting can boost BDNF by 50 to 400%. BDNF also has antidepressant benefits and it protects against stroke. Fasting protects the brain against neurodegeneration. During autophagy, fasting can help clear out beta amyloid plaques and lower oxidative stress on neuronal tissues. Fasting boosts growth hormone that provides neuroprotection and regeneration. Growth hormone not only protects against muscle catabolism, but also prevents brain cells from dying. Fasting gives the brain ketones, which lower inflammation and maintain stable energy levels. Fasting increases mitochondrial biogenesis, which helps to produce more energy. There's a lot of mitochondria in the brain and other vital organs. A passage that I really liked uh, in the book that Simland also talks about is with regards to how fasting affects a person's character. And here's what he says in regards to this. A nation is born stoic and dies Epicurean. Will Durant. That's an amazing quote. Will Durant wrote this book on the history of the world, which I'm planning on reading at some point. 
Stoicism is a branch of Hellenistic philosophy that emphasizes personal ethics, logic, and virtuous living, whereas Epicureanism places pleasure as the greatest good. When you look at history, then it's so true. Great civilizations of the past, like ancient Greece, Rome, Mesopotamia, the French monarchy of Louis XIV, all fell into the trap of excess glamour and comfort. As people became wealthier, they became softer and thus more vulnerable to foreign invaders or upheavals. They became the victims of their own hedonic downfall. Intermittent fasting not only has incredible health benefits that are linked to increased longevity, but also has psychological effects that help to escape the hedonic treadmill. In a world of unlimited empty calories and too much stimulation, the easier thing to do is to just say no. Although I would perhaps say it's not necessarily the easier thing to do, but the more productive and in a way virtuous thing to do. Uh, we live in a time that might be labeled as Epicurean, especially where I'm living, the United States. There is a tremendous abundance and you have access to unlimited calories that are comparatively very cheap. You could get a box of Oreos in like 10 minutes and it would be way more sugar than our forefathers, our deep ancestors would have ever experienced in maybe a lifetime. To reject that and to focus on deep productivity as opposed to pleasure definitely causes a change in character. And this is perhaps why several spiritual traditions, including my own, the Hindu tradition, have advocated a degree of fasting in one's life as a means of building character. And it's so liberating to know that you don't necessarily have to eat, like you're fine without food for the time being and you can be productive. Now I've found for me personally that I like to listen to my body when it comes to fasting. I don't like to do extended fasting. The longest I've ever gone without eating is about 40 hours and it felt a little long for me. I know there are benefits to extended fasting um, but basically for my own accord, I, I feel that if I'm really doing any of those extended fasts, then I end up thinking about food and I you go through all these emotions and I'm sure there's, uh, there's a value in doing that. But for me, the most productive amounts of fasting is with regards to maximizing autophagy. And once again, they say autophagy is maximized starting at around 14 hours of fasting and then peaking out at two days. And then after that, it starts to dip. And so generally speaking, I try to go 16, eight most days of the week. And every once in a while, I'll go 20 hours without eating. And if I ever feel like eating breakfast or eating earlier in the day, if I've had like a cardio session in the morning or I hit the weights kind of extra hard and it riled up my hunger, then I'll go ahead and eat and I won't do intermittent fasting that day. I don't like to be dogmatic about it. I just want to use it to the degree that it is productive in my own life. And I think a lot of my viewers could find a lot of benefit from incorporating intermittent fasting in their lifestyle. Have you ever tried IF? Do you have any experience with fasting? Was it productive for you or did you find it detrimental? I'd love to know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you very soon. Cheers.